Hey everyone, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2017 Chevy Silverado 1500, we're going to be showing you how to install the Roadmaster diode wiring kit. Before we do that though, let's take a minute, check it out, and make sure it's going to be right for you. Before we jump right in, uh, I want to address one of the big questions that a lot of people wonder when it comes to flat tone a vehicle down the road, and that is, what parts am I going to need? So there's going to be a total of five main components. Your first one will be the base plate. That'll hook up to your vehicle's frame and provide us with an attachment point. That way we can hook our tow bar up. This is the second component. That's gonna be the actual link that connects the front of your vehicle to the back of your coach. The third main part will be safety cables. Those are just there in the event of an unlikely disconnect to keep everything paired together. Your fourth main part will be tow bar wiring. And this is gonna transfer the lighting signals from the back of your RV to the back of your truck. And last but not least, the fifth main part will be a supplemental braking system. And what this is going to do is apply the brakes in your truck whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome, bringing you to a more predictable and complete stop. Now that we've gone over those main components, this is a great example on how uh, tow bar wiring is going to work. So on our coach, we got the left turn signal going and it's being sent back here to the left turn on our truck. And the same is going to hold true for the right turn your tail lights, as well as your uh, brakes. So you have all of your bases covered there. And, you know, when it comes to picking out tow bar wiring, uh, a diode kit like the Roadmaster is something that I always recommend at least 99% of the time. And I say it because once you have them installed, uh, you're not really gonna even notice that they're there. Um, don't take away from the appearance or anything. And really it's all about the ease of use. So when you are ready to hook up, uh, you just plug a cable in and that's it. You don't have to mess around with, you know, running cables and having magnetic lights and all that type of thing. Uh, to compare this kit to another one that's available, uh, the Blue Ox kit, for example, honestly, on this particular vehicle, um, I might lean more towards the Blue Ox kit. Um, in terms of reliability and everything, the Roadmaster and the Blue Ox are right on par with each other. I really don't favor one over the other, uh, but I think the Blue Ox might be a little bit better choice on this particular vehicle just because it's so long. With that Blue Ox kit, you get some extra wiring uh, that you can use to extend it and be able to hook everything up without having to source, you know, five, 10 extra feet of wiring separately. I mentioned that ease of use and all you're gonna have to do when you're ready to hook up, you got your cable here, plug it into the front of your truck and into the back of the motorhome, and that's it. So extremely simple, which I think is important when it comes to a flat tow. Uh, there are several variations of this kit available, and really the big difference between them is what type of cable uh, you're gonna get. And that's just kind of how it is with these flat toes. When you go to set them up, there's a lot of little things you need to pay attention to uh, to kind of make everything right. And so what kit is gonna be best for you is primarily going to depend on what style of tow bar you have. So for example, uh, today our neighbor ended up going with the Nighthawk uh, made by Roadmaster and it actually comes included with a cable and a six-way plug. And so the kit that he went with is what I call the bare bones. You get your wiring, your diodes, and some connectors, little ins and outs to help you install it, um, which is a perfect choice considering he has these parts already. Now, if your tow bar does not, uh, the majority of them aren't uh, going to come with a wiring connector and a uh, cable. And you have a few to choose from. Okay, so if your tow bar has channels in it, right, a little piece on the side here that your wiring and your cables run through. If that's a, the style tow bar you got, you're going to want to get the kit that has a straight cable like this. So the whole thing will be straight. That way you can utilize the channels or even use the hybrid style one like the one that's actually on this, where it's coiled at one end and straight the rest of the way. That way you can run everything through there. Um, if your tow bar does not have channels, you're going to want to use uh, this style of cable where it's coiled. That way it'll be up off the ground when you're going straight, but stretch out when you make those turns. And there's a seven to six way. This is probably by far the most popular. Um, so that's probably what I would go with, but for whatever reason, if you want a four-way round style connector at the front of your truck, there's one of those available too. And then you also have 
uh, which this is pretty rare. Don't see this too often um, unless your coach is a little bit older. Uh, you see them every now and again. There's also a kit that has a four-way flat to four-way flat. So that's always uh, available if that's your particular situation. When it comes down to it, you know, this could be a great kit to get those lighting signals to the back of your truck. We do a, a ton of setups uh, and, and use these Roadmaster diodes. They're really reliable. Rarely do we run into any issues with them. And the, you know, different choices of cables that you can use uh, really helps complete your whole entire package, if you will. As far as the installation goes, really not too bad. It's not that it's complicated. It's more or less just time consuming having to route wires and everything. But thankfully on a truck like the Silverado, you've got quite a bit of room to work and uh, you know, it shouldn't give you too many issues. But if you'd like to hang around, we'll go ahead, pull into the garage and get started on it now. To begin our installation, we're going to first start by taking our bundle of wiring. We're going to take one end of it and drop it down uh, to the front side of our truck and now would be a good time to do any other wiring or, or airline tubes or anything like that. If you're putting a braking system in your vehicle, that gets routed to the front as well. So uh, what I did, took the wiring, dropped it down. We have the grill removed still from our base plate installation, which is what I recommend doing. Gives you a lot more room to work. But I just took that wire and ran it through here where it comes out where our bracket is bolted up. We'll do, you can grab the rubber boot from the back of your six-way plug. We'll slide that onto our wiring. And then we're gonna separate each individual wire here. Just carefully cut between them. And peel them back a little ways. And then what I like to do, let's kind of cut maybe a half inch or so off just in case we nicked one of the wires and you're we separating them, it kind of gives us a fresh start there. And then you're gonna to want to uh, strip back the insulation on each end of our wire, exposing the, the bare wire underneath, and then go ahead and twist them all tight. That way we'll get a good connection. If you look at the back of our connector plug, they're going to be labeled. It might be a little tricky to see, but we'll have TM for tail light, so the brown wire goes to it. GD for ground, so the white wire goes there. LT is left turn, which means the yellow wire gets plugged in there. Then RT for right turn, so the green wire goes there. So the way these work, there will be a set screw with this Phillips head on it. Back it out almost all the way and then take your wiring, place it into the terminal. What I'm gonna do too is kinda cut these back a little bit, that way we don't have bare wire hanging out. So about like that, looks pretty good. We'll tighten that set screw down. Just like that, and so we'll just work our way around uh, plugging in the appropriate color wire into the labeled terminals. Got all the wires hooked up into the back of the connector plug, and this is how it turned out. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just kind of temporarily put our boot on it and bolt this up. And once we verify everything's working when we got the job done, I'm going to come back and on these terminals put some sealer. That way it's all sealed up, protected against corrosion. But I do that at the very end. That way, if we need to get in here for any reason, we don't have a big mess to deal with. So just a word of advice there. And I will uh, temporarily get this back together here. Back to where we dropped our wiring down, we can ground our, our white wire here. So what you want to do on the harness is very carefully cut just that white wire in half. I'm going to separate it from the rest of our harness here. And the side here that runs down to our connector plug, we're going to strip that insulation back. 
And actually what I'm going to do, since my supplemental braking system is right here, and that has a wire coming out of it that needs to be grounded as well, I'm just going to tie them two together, kind of get two for one here. But uh, what you're going to do, take a ring terminal, slide it over the bare end of the wire, and crimp it down. Like I said, this will have to be grounded. So I'm just going to go right here on this on this thick metal, and I'll just use a self-tapping screw to get that complete. Before you continue to route the rest of the wiring towards the back of the truck, what you want to do, the piece of the white wire that we didn't use, you know, that, that goes to nothing, Go ahead and separate that from the bundle and hold on to it for the time being because we're probably going to use this a little bit later during the installation. So with that out of the way, I'll continue to route our wiring here and uh, show you how I did it. I got our wiring uh, routed here and so I just continued along the side and kind of routed it over this way. Might be a little tricky to see, but it's gonna drop down underneath the truck uh, to the bottom side there. And when you're doing this, especially in this area, do your best to avoid any hot or moving parts. But with that underneath the truck now, we're gonna let it lie. We can go to the back and get our tail lights out. Um, and that'll make it easier to route our wiring here in a little bit. So if you lower your tailgate, the uh, faster is holding the tail lights in, you're just gonna have two of them. Uh, we'll pull them out using a T15 Torx bit. Then we should be able to grab our tail light and just work it around. If you pull straight back on it. Sometimes these things are in there good. It just takes a little bit of manipulation there. But we'll get it released and then we can get it disconnected. So you'll have this red tab here. Which you can push back on. Our truck is super dusty and these are almost kind of locked in here. So just careful not to break it. So you push back on it. Then push down on the center of that tab. That'll release it. And then for this, it's just a quarter turn. Pop that out. You can set our uh, tail light off to the side and do the same thing to get the passenger one removed. Moving back to the front of the truck, we're underneath of it. This is where our wiring is gonna drop down. And essentially, there's this big uh, wiring harness that runs along our frame rail and I essentially just followed that, uh, pushing it up in these little clips that were on our harness and using some zip ties every now and again as well just to keep it secure. But we followed that essentially all the way back. And then just in front of our rear tire, I kind of pushed it towards on you know, the inside of the frame um, and continued to uh, go towards the back of the truck. Here's where our wiring comes over the frame and again there's actually another factory harness I just used to push that essentially all the way back here in this area where we can uh, kind of separate and extend our wiring. So right here in this area our wiring actually ran out of length and so what I did um, you know it's only a couple feet short so Depending on how you route yours, you might be able to get away with not extending them, but uh, if you need to, I just use a couple of buck connectors, crimp them on, a couple extra feet of wiring, and we'll be in good shape. So those come down, and 
At this point, you know, when we ran out of wire, I also separated the green wire from the harness because that's going to run over towards the passenger side of the truck, which we'll get to in a minute. But what you can do now is take that extra piece of white wire that we saved and tape that to the end of the yellow and brown. And we're going to use that as a jumper. So the other end of our white wire is going to run with the green wire to the passenger side. So, uh, it, and the reason as well why we removed the tail light so we could just push our wiring up into place. So I'll feed that up there, make it a lot easier. That way we don't have to bother with coming down underneath the truck again. And as far as the green and white wire, it's going to be a little tricky to see, but the concept's, you know, pretty simple. It just runs along through there, up above our hitch and everything. And uh, here's where it's going to come out right there. So push it up into the taillight pocket, just like we did on the driver's side. On the driver's side, here's where our new wiring came up. And with the yellow wire, I just uh, stripped it back, crimped on a blue spade terminal. For the white and brown, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take both of those bare ends and twist them together. I'm going to get them nice and tight. And you can take the yellow uh, spade terminal and crimp that on. And as far as the factory, factory wiring, we're going to be using um, the brown wire. So if you just open this loom up and get to all the wires in there, we're going to be using the brown wire and that darker colored green wire. The brown wire will be our taillight signal and the green will be for our stop and turn. So what you want to do with these, cut them in half and then all four ends you're going to strip back and crimp on a blue terminal so i'll do that same thing for our three remaining ends there we'll grab a couple diodes now and take that sticky tape off the back and i'm just going to stick these together like that and then on the ends that are labeled out, you're going to plug these into the factory wires closest to our connector plug here. We'll just match the other sides up color for color. So brown to brown, green to green. And since the green, the factory green is our stop and turn, we're going to plug our new yellow wire into it. And since the factory brown is our taillight signal, we'll take our new brown and white wire. And plug that one into that diode. I secured our diodes to the factory wiring just using a couple of zip ties plugged our connectors uh, back into our tail light. With all that done, we'll go ahead and re-secure our light the opposite way that we removed it. Over here on the passenger side, essentially we did the exact same thing. Um, even the factory wire colors are going to be identical. So brown's tail light, green is stop and turn. So what I did, uh, for our new wiring, the white wire gets plugged into the diode that has a factory brown and the new green wire gets plugged into the diode that has the factory green wire. So pretty straightforward there. Secured them the same and now we'll get it plugged in and, and hooked back up. This is a good idea to test your wiring now that it's all hooked up. So uh, you can you know, use your motorhome to do this. Uh, keep in mind that if your motorhome has any issues, it might mislead you. I'm thinking it's something you did on the truck side, but 
Well, with that in mind, I'm going to try out our taillight signal. We'll hit our left turn, our right turn, and our brake lights. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster diode wiring kit on our 2017 Chevrolet Silverado 1500.